If you have ongoing exposure to controlling people, it's a virtual certainty that you're going to experience blurry boundaries, which is why I have created the extensive online course called This Is Me, Establishing Boundaries with the Controllers in Your Life. There's a link below that will give you all of the details, and I hope that you would find it therapeutic. I learned very early in my career that if I was going to have any kind of helpful intervention in the lives of other individuals, I would need to practice the characteristic of empathy. And taking it a little bit further, let's also go, go, go so far as to say empathy is not just something you can conjure up as a technique. And it certainly is not something that's just an intellectual tool only. Empathy needs to be part of what you are on the inside of you, uh, where you honestly want to know who that other person is, what's going on inside, what makes them tick, why they feel as they feel. And when people pick up on that, you can actually have a very positive impact in their life. Now, I also learned that in addition to emphasizing empathy, I also needed to emphasize another characteristic, and that is objectivity. And, and basically, I needed to have enough uh, intellectual and emotional detachment to know when to go in and show that understanding and when to pull back and hold on to certain boundaries and even teach certain boundaries. And so there's a real delicate balance between those kind of characteristics. Now, you can see where I'm going with this. There are uh, there, There's a whole category of people in our world that we would refer to as the empath. And these are individuals with uh, for whom empathy become, becomes very natural. And yet, when they encounter the narcissist in their world, it can create, well, some minuses. And so there are pluses to being an empath. In fact, there are some serious pluses, but there are also minuses when the narcissist wants to show up. Now, let's, let's go through those and see if we can get an idea of what we're talking about. When we say there are pluses to being an empath, empaths are the kind of people that pick up on subtle cues that other people have. Uh, they have a strong sense of intuition. They they like knowing uh, and uh, and sensing another person's needs and feelings and motives, and they're good at being able to do that. Empaths are, are prone towards kindness and helpfulness, sometimes to a fault, but they tend to be very uh, pleasant kind of people. They're good listeners. Uh, they tend to be quite curious about what makes people tick, what's going on inside that other person's interior. And that always is a good thing. And it's not for data gathering. It's just, no, I really want to know you. Um, uh, even with difficult people, empaths tend to uh, show a great deal of patience and uh, and uh, and willingness to let the the, uh, the process of a relationship play out. And they can be quite skilled at that. Uh, they can create an accepting and appropriate space for other people to uh, to feel safe in. <sighs> I'm with this person that knows me and cares about me, and and they're able to do that, and people pick up on it, and it uh, it uh, bodes well for relationships. They're willing to set aside their own personal ego and their own uh, self centeredness so that they can be of service to other individuals. Uh, they are often quite creative. And if they, if they don't uh, have active creative skills, they still appreciate the arts and, and uh, they enjoy beauty. They enjoy nature, uh, even animals. They can get along well with animals and they're very kind toward them. Empaths are easily and willfully affirming and compassionate. Uh, they're very uneasy with themes of violence or fear-inducing kinds of themes. Uh, for example, in entertainment and all of that, it's like, no, uh, empaths don't go into this blow them up stuff or kick people before they kick you kind of thing. Instead, empaths tend to be very supportive for toward the underdog. They're trustworthy when a friend needs someone to maintain confidentiality. And they're, they're, they often are, are drawn towards themes of spirituality, although they're not necessarily attracted uh, towards organized religion. Some are, uh, but uh, that's a whole different story, and impasse know and understand that. 
And so when you take a look at the entire package in that positive direction, it's like there are a lot of pluses to being, to being an empath. Now, along comes the narcissist. And the narcissist has a real high control agenda. They're very selfish. They're highly competitive, which means they like to be on the winning end, which means they uh, require certain people in their life to be losers. That's where you come in. Uh, they have to be the alpha. They have low levels of empathy. That's part of the defining feature of narcissism. They're quite willing to use people and they're manipulative. And so you might think, well, what could go wrong? A narcissist and an empath. And the answer is, oh, there's a lot that could go wrong. Uh, and, and it's uh, important to note, narcissists are actually drawn toward the empath. It's like, oh, this is somebody that likes to help people and likes to be affirming. <laughs> Boy, does that fit me? I want people to not just help me, but they, I want them to serve me. I want them to be, to be sub, uh, uh, subject to me. Uh, I can make this work for me and my schemes. And so to, uh, to the narcissist, the empath becomes someone to be used. The empath is someone that they think, I'm going to take advantage of you. Now, if you're that empath, you might pick up on that, um, but you can actually have some difficulty confronting that person, knowing that the narcissist is going to give their inevitable uh, power reaction. Uh, and then the, the empath may sometimes back away saying, well, assertiveness just doesn't work. And, and by the way, that's a, that's a false statement. Uh, assertiveness is not predicated upon the other person changing. Uh, but empaths have a hard time with confrontation and drawing boundaries. Uh, sometimes that, empath, uh, that uh, empath may find themselves being pulled into an enabler's role that they didn't want or sign up for. And yet there it is. That's what the narcissist requires. Uh, empaths can sometimes have difficulty relaxing when they're around that high control, uh, manipulative kind of person. Uh, they know that the narcissist is going to become easily critical. And so they can actually operate with a certain kind of anxiety that under, uh, undermines, uh, their effectiveness. Uh, the empath can often feel like they're the dumping ground in a world of complainers. Uh, the narcissist gripes and moans and groans and the empath may think, well, I've certainly heard more than my fair share of that. Um, saying no to a narcissist can sometimes be quite difficult for an empath. In fact, it can feel draining uh, because uh, they tend to hang in there way too long. They needed to have said no many times before. And as a result, they wind up absorbing the narcissist negative vibes, uh, you, you just kind of feel like um, uh, th there's just too much of that negativity going on and you want to create a pleasant atmosphere, but uh, despite all your good efforts, it just doesn't seem to happen. Um, many times when you're that empath and you have the narcissist who, of course, creates the dominant kind of themes, you feel like a misfit. You feel like, well, I, I don't really belong here, and yet there you are. And it may be that that narcissist keeps showing up, whether it's inside family or social or work kind of settings. It's like, I can't get away from them. Uh, there are times when you can struggle with compassion fatigue. Uh, and it's you're, you're so inclined towards being kind and friendly, but it still wears you out. And you can get caught up in emotional loops. And what I mean is, uh, if you get into that anxiety or if there's some anger or uh, disillusionment or loneliness, it's hard to pull out of that. And it just can uh, can uh, actually overwhelm you. And then narcissists will uh, strongly draw upon that impasse sense of duty and obligation. And it's like, oh, yeah, there's lots of duty. And there's lots of obligation you have for me. So they keep coming at you with the agenda. And so the downside is narcissists will use you until you're being used up and then they'll use you some more. So let's go back to what I was saying just a few minutes ago. It's really good to have uh, empathy, but we also need to have that delicate balance with objectivity. And so let's acknowledge objectively if you're an empath, you're doing no one any favors by allowing them to be controlling over you and insensitive toward you. Uh, the force of your goodness is going to be thwarted because they live behind a thick wall of protection towards themselves. 
Narcissists, and this is important for you to remind yourself, even though you don't want to believe it or uh, acknowledge what it means, but narcissists are posers. They're users. They're exploiters. They don't care about you any further than you're useful to them. That's it. And so it's not selfish for you to practice uh, self-care. Assertiveness, as I said just a moment ago, is not predicated on them going along with you. Assertiveness is predicated upon you standing firmly for who you are and what your convictions are. It's actually loving to say, uh, I'm not going to participate in somebody's nefarious schemes. I don't do that. And so uh, if you're that empath, give yourself permission to schedule some me time. Uh, know when to avoid that user and that poser. And then also know when it's time to part ways. Empathy is a wonderful way of life. Narcissism is a destructive way of life. And so uh, you're, you're going to need to live with the necessary discipline that says, uh, I can still apply my very best characteristics toward people who can appreciate it. And then I'm also going to know when to pull back. I'm going to be able to see into that other person's schemes and know this is not a safe person. Therefore, I need to keep my distance and it's sometimes, if necessary, to completely eliminate them from my life altogether. Let your best characteristics stay and then recognize the narcissist is what they are and it's not going to be good news for you. I hope the videos such as this give you some good things to think about. And if you've not already hit that subscribe button, I would encourage you to do so. And uh, we'll keep more videos coming your way. If, if you are somebody who's struggling uh, with that narcissistic person who wants to take advantage of your good characteristics, it could be that you could use some uh, some therapy. And I've teamed up with the BetterHelp people, and there's a link below uh, where you can go towards a, a whole team of licensed professional therapists. And if that's something you could uh, use, then I would encourage you to go through the link there and see if that would be a program that you would be willing to uh, to go along with and, and again, practice self-care. Also, I have my courses. And these courses uh, are, we have various ones about you know, finding yourself despite the controllers and, and uh, having um, boundaries with them and learning how to have healthy relation connection skills. So there are multiple courses that we have at your availability and uh, you can go to the links below for all of that. We have my books, especially the one uh, when pleasing you is killing me. And so uh, take, take advantage of the resources that we have below. If you're an empath, good for you. Uh, it means that you're one, you're one of the kind people that's trying to make a positive difference in the world, but also recognize there are others who are not quite so uh, predisposed. That being the case, uh, I really do strongly encourage that self-care and the boundaries that go along with it, because I'm hoping that ultimately you can indeed be that person who stands for and then lives inside of peace. <laughs>